नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री विष्णु सहस्रनाम नंबर 423 संवत्सर the common use of this word is to mean a year which is called vatsara or samvatsara often the word or the prefix sam put before a word the word uh it may not uh, change the meaning very much as in kirtan samkirtan so samvatsara a complete year now there are many names are given kala is one important name of vishnu which has just been given uh, yugadikrit he who makes the yugas makes them go around yugadi and then that means all the different phases uh, of time time can be as we find in the third canto of bhagavatam time there are many measurements of time from the uh, very smallest up to the whole of the time of the universe uh, and they all go they all go on under the direction of krishna uh, <coughs> krishna is time so vatsara a year <coughs> this is among all the units of time a very important unit of time because it means a a complete cycle uh this of seasons ritu that name also recently came up that's also a uh, measure of time <coughs> but uh some vatsara a year means uh, one complete cycle of the seasons and it is that by which uh, generally lives are measured uh, every living being lives for 100 years and they say well um, my father died at the age of 67 but that uh, 100 years that is the uh, approximation for every uh living being or in this kali yuga every human being um and of course the year is different according to the place of residence so brahma also lives for 100 years but his 100 years are very long uh is is each year is very long so <clears throat> we can remember in the passing of time this is krishna in the course of time also time is that factor in which one at the appropriate time receives the results of one's various activities so it may be that for some time one is very prosperous then all of a sudden you lose everything or gradually you lose everything uh or one may go through also there are uh, astrological periods one goes through uh, which uh, in which one may go through a one may go through a very difficult patch in one's life nothing seems to work properly and then everything goes very well uh due to the different uh, astrological influences but the basic unit of time is the year that is krishna we can remember as we make our new year resolutions the new, the, the uh, gregorian calendar year uh that is of 2014 will, will be finished in less than 2 weeks and there's a tradition Th- this is the predominant calendar in the world at the present time and there is a tradition in the western countries where this calendar 
originated to make a New Year's resolution, something good, how to improve my life in the next year, something I, w I vow to do to improve my life. So, anyway, at the time of initiation, devotees take the important vow. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan. At the time of initiation, a devotee takes the vow to surrender his life to Krishna. So we can re-vow to do that. And within the broad context of surrendering to Krishna, we can also uh, take up some other vow if we wish. It's, it's a, Actually, vows are usually taken up. The sankalpa, that, that is, uh, at the beginning of some uh, particular austerity we may do for some time. For instance, in the month of Kartik, at the beginning of the month, or just before the month, when we should make a sankalpa, I will do this, 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 I will eat only very simple food, it has to be defined what exactly that simple food is, what I'll refrain from, and all for the uh, pleasure of Krishna. <clears throat> uh, other meanings, uh, one who resides in the Patala Loka, at the bottom of the universe. If we go to the bottom of the universe, we'll find Krishna. If we go to the top of the universe, we'll find Krishna. If we go in the ten directions, we'll find Krishna. If we're devotees. If we're not, we won't find him anywhere. <laughs> because he doesn't reveal himself to everyone. So, this uh, residing on the couch of Ananta, Ananta Shesha, he's just lying there. This um, Parashara Bhatta, the Great uh, Sri Vaishnava commentator has given from the previous name, Ugra, that for several names, he gives these names to be particularly associated with Kalki Avatar. So Ugra is quite clear, a uh, terrible form of the Lord, uh, comes as Kalki. But what about he who's lying on the couch of Ananta. He doesn't seem to be very terrible. Well, he's just waiting. That's all. Just waiting to come as Kalki. That's what, how Parashara Bhatta says. He's, he's relaxing now, but he's, he's getting ready to come. Just like in any battle, uh, going on over many days, Kurukshetra war, at night, the, uh, different warriors would relax. They might even entertain each other. Uh, and they seem to be very relaxed and peaceful, but they're just getting ready for another day of bloody carnage. That's uh, quite amazing in Vedic culture, how the Kshatriyas, they have an ongoing battle. At night, they'll, they'll dine with each other and joke, and then the next day, they'll do their best to kill each other. They may actually kill each other. <coughs> what is that? Grihe praptam vishvasto akuto bhayam. Grihe praptam. I can't remember the third word. Anyone who comes to your home, he should be received. He uh, should not feel any fear or discomfort. Should feel quite trusting, even if the, the enemy. Grihe uh, praptam shatrumapi. Even if one. One's enemy comes to one's home, he should be received in such a way that he feels uh, quite comfortable and uh, like this. <coughs> <coughs> then uh, Shankaracharya he gives the meaning: Sambatsra uh, Sambasanti, all living beings reside in him which is uh, there are different names here Niketana, the house uh, different names in Vishus Asranama which gives uh, the same meaning so I won't dilate on it here Mayata Tamidang Sarvam Jagada Vyakta Mahatira Matsthani Sarvabhuta Matsthani Sarvabhuta it means all living beings reside in me uh, Baladev Vidya Bhushan, he gives the meaning that 
He always remains with his devotees. He always resides with his devotees. <clears throat> Actually, he's with everyone. But uh, others, they don't recognize him. They can't perceive him. He's particularly concerned with his devotees. Nahang tishtami vaikunte yogi nam ridhyeshuva yatra gayanti mad bhakta tatra tishtami narada. He says, I don't reside in Vaikunda. Although he does reside in Vaikunda. Otherwise there'd be no meaning to Vaikunda. Imagine. That's what the demons want. They want to go to, they want the kingdom of God without God. <laughs> they want to make life very peaceful and happy. All this idea we shall make the world peaceful, it's demoniac, actually. If the, the, I, with, they want to make the world dim, uh, peaceful without Krishna. So that's actually demonic. Just like Ravana was living very peacefully in Lanka. He was a great demon. So undoubtedly Vishnu resides in Vaikuntha. Otherwise there's no meaning to Vaikuntha. You go back to Godhead and there's no God. Well, uh, for, the, for the materialistic religionists, they'd like that. We'll just enjoy the facilities of God. But the, the devotees, they want to go there because he's there. It's not because it's... Uh, blissful, there's no birth and death. Well, the bliss comes from Krishna being there. there in Vaikuntha, there are flower aeroplanes and uh, the men and women are all very beautiful. Uh, uh, <coughs> the women are uh, far more beautiful than the Apsaras of heaven who are far more beautiful than the women here. I just read something that Srila Prabhupada had said that in the heavenly planets, we're not talking about Vaikuntha here, we're talking about the heavenly planets. The Apsaras, their natural bodily scent, they don't put on perfume, but their natural bodily scent is such that you can smell them from a long distance. It's a very beautiful smell, not a bad smell. And when they bathe in the, in the pond, the whole pond becomes scented. Uh, but they're not very beautiful compared to the women of Vaikuntha. But what is the use of Vaikuntha without Vishnu? Then, then there's no meaning. So definitely he resides in Vaikuntha, but he says, I don't reside, because he wants to make the point, Yogi Naam Hridaya Shuva, I don't reside in the hearts of the yogis, but he's in the hearts of the yogis, otherwise why are they performing yoga? Uh, but he makes the point, Yatra Gayanti Mad Bhakta Tatra I, I reside where my devotees are singing. He said, and singing means they're not singing some nonsense song, but when the devotees sing, they sing about Krishna. <coughs> now, the next name is Daksha. And you may be surprised, because uh, generally we think of Daksha, Daksha Prajapati, who who, the narration of whom doesn't come off so very well in Srimad Bhagavatam. He uh, severely insults Lord Shiva, for which he gets his head cut off. Uh, he's not very fond of Narada Muni and curses Narada Muni. Nevertheless, he's a great personality. But the much greater personality... Uh, is Vishnu, who's called Daksha. Uh, Srila Prabhupada gives the meaning of the name Daksha in relationship to Prajapati Daksha as expert. And he's very expert in sexual activities. But the prime meaning that's given by the uh, commentating Acharyas here is that he's very quick in action. <clears throat> uh, so Parashara Bhatta he says that like the Kalki Avatar he's very quick in destroying all the demons and particularly uh, we can remember in this regard about Parashuram it said that his chopper was moving so quickly that just in, in a second he had decapitated thousands of Wicked Kshatriyas, moving faster than the speed of mind, yeah. he would decapitate all the uh, 
kshatra bandhus, those who are supposed to be kshatriyas, but not really uh, properly acting as kshatriyas, being envious of the brahmanas. So, uh, very quick, uh, he's very quick in coming to the rescue of his devotees. And uh, <clears throat> later on, when this comes as name, this same name Daksha will come as name 917. At that point, uh, Parashara Bhatta, he gives the meaning of him being very fast, that he p- gives one example, he came very quickly to the rescue of Gajendra, even though he's an animal, but he's a devotee. And then another uh, commentator, sub-commentator on Parasha Bhatta's commentary said that Vishnu was coming to rescue Gajendra, coming on the back of Garuda, but he wasn't satisfied that Garuda was going fast enough, so he got down from the back of Garuda and he carried Garuda and came much quicker. He was impatient. He wanted to come quickly because his devotee was suffering, calling out. (coughs) Devotees, they sometimes say, when will I get the mercy? So that's a good, that's a good uh, prayer. Samut Kanta, one should be very anxious to attain the mercy of Krishna. Sometimes we think, well, I've been chanting Hare Krishna 20 years. When will that mercy come? But actually it will come very quickly. Our lives in Kali Yuga, Lal, uh, the first symptom mentioned in the Bhagavatam about Kali Yuga is that people have short lives. Mostly people have short lives. So we think that, oh, I've been chanting Hare Krishna 20 years. We think that's a very long time and well, just think of Vishwamitra meditating for 60,000 years. So, we think it's a very long time. seems to us like a very long time, but actually, uh, it's not very long. Very quickly, Krishna will deliver us. We should have that faith. Or even if he doesn't quickly deliver us, anyway, we're completely surrendered to him. But the fact is that he will quickly deliver. He doesn't Krishna will test us in various ways to see how sincere and serious we are, but he doesn't uh, delay delivering his devotees who are very sincere and determined in his service. He doesn't make it unnecessary, difficult, or uh, he's very eager to deliver his devotees. So this meaning, uh, expert, of course... uh, the word expert is best applied to Krishna. Different people are expert in different things. Uh, <coughs> there's so many different things that one can do. One can be expert in writing computer programs. One can be expert in writing computer viruses. Um, one can be expert in uh, building temples. We trust that the architect, the Stapati overseeing this is expert. He's engaged in that because he's... Not that everyone's expert in building temples. If you ask me how to build a temple, I wouldn't have the faintest idea what to do. Uh, Actually, I would. I'd call a Stapati. uh, (laughs) Otherwise, I... I, Someone is expert in cooking chapatis. Uh, Someone is expert in insulting others. Uh, there are so many areas in which one can be expert in. Krishna is the all-round expert in everything. So you think that the greatest batsman is Krishna? And you know, I said the word all-round here in India. We think of the word all-round, that, that applies to cricket, especially. That means they're good in bowling and batting, is it? And fielding, when they're not bowling. So, but Krishna doesn't waste his time with useless things like that. He gives the ability to others to do that if they want to waste their life in that particular way. But uh, he doesn't do such things. Expert in insult, yes, he can be also. Uh, <coughs> just like we find in the nectar of devotion, 
he insulted this Kala. The Krishna is Kala. Time. There's another Kala described in Bhagavatam, the, the Yavana Kala. Uh, so he, this Kala, it seemed that he had insulted Krishna by saying Krishna means black. So he, he's, he said, yeah, he's just like a black snake. And Krishna said, yes, I'm a black snake. And I'm going to swallow up that frog called Kala. So, <laughs> we find in the pastimes, uh, in Vrindavan also, that, uh, <clears throat> especially among Krishna and the gopis, they're very expert at, uh, trading insults with each other in the, in the love play. So that's not seriously insulting others. But uh, that's all part of the love play. So Krishna, he's all around expert in everything. Otherwise, how could this world go on? It's so expertly organized. Uh, <coughs> Some Vatsara, the year goes around with the seasons. Uh, everything is perfectly in place. The scientists have discovered more than 20 what they call constants, various constants. The, 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 uh, the, the uh, speed of light should be just as it is. Gravitational force, the weak force within an electron, the strong force within, uh, within an atom. Sorry, This should all be... Uh, it, it has to be exactly just as it is for the universe to function as we see it as it's functioning. These are all extremely fine-tuned. Who could have arranged? Only Krishna, so expert. Baladev Vidya Bhushan gives another meaning. Uh, the derivation of it, I can't understand. His supreme handsomeness is revealed to the residents of Vrindavan. <clears throat> Shankaracharya says, uh, pravridha, immensity, bigness, great yeah, uh, strength, and quickly doing activities. These are these three qualities particularly qualify a person as daksha, and they are inherent in the supreme person, who is Krishna. The next name is Vishrama, which means rest. It's a common word. Do you have that in Tamil? Vishram. No, it comes in every other Indian language, I would guess. In Telugu also. It's a very common word. <clears throat> so he is the place of rest. Uh, Daksha means he's very quick and expert in activities. He's also the place of rest. Uh, he's resting at the bottom of the universe and all living beings can rest in him. So this, this name is like Ashraya or Sharana. It's, it means uh, we can take shelter in him. We, we are looking for we want relief from this world, life of toil, uh, life of distress. Krishna offers that. Uh, one of the commentators, he says that uh, Bhagavan created night after day so that everyone can rest. Of course, in the modern age, we have electricity, so people go on working all through the night. That's it. The electricity has made life more troublesome. Anyway, people are working, but with electricity, there are, uh, with so much light available, then people can go. The people who want you to work, they'll make you. They'll make a situation where people go on working day and night. They invest so much in machines, just like. In Surat, in Gujarat, there are so many uh, spinning machines for cloth. <coughs> Not spinning, weaving. So, uh, 
So to make a factory with that is a big investment. So to get the return on the investment, the machines, they go on working 24 hours a day. That's a common thing. Factories, they work 24 hours a day because there's so much in investment and, uh, and <coughs> in that. To, so to get their return and to, uh, if, the, if, the, if the machines need to be productive, to, it's not just that by buying the machine you're going to make anything. They, they have to be busy. So they, they keep the machines running 24 hours a day. That means people have to work throughout the clock. It's a common thing. People work at night. Otherwise, Krishna's arrangement is that people don't work at night. Only The only people who work at night are thieves, uh, <coughs> <clears throat> Not all thieves do night shift, but many of them do. And uh, watchmen, they also do. And uh, the tantrics, they also like to be awake at night. They're doing their magic, their black magic. And maybe some sadhus who have conquered over sleeping, they'll also... Otherwise, the people, the women, they may be awake at night with their babies... Uh, crying otherwise the natural cause is rest now, after sh- strain and stress when we feel ah now I can take rest and we can think this this is Krishna I remember, I remember once many years ago this must be more than 30 years ago uh, one sannyasi came to Bangkok, where I was in Thailand, where I was stationed at the time. <coughs> so we met him at the airport, and we asked him, "Would he like to come, take bath, or would he like to speak to the devotee?" He said, "Please, just let me take rest." He said, "I came from America to Japan. I was several days in Japan. I was still jet lagged." And he, he came from Japan to Bangkok. And then uh, he did in Japan. It had been day and night. I remember sometimes like that in some places. The GBC comes for just a short time, and then it's uh, because there's so much to discuss, so many things to do. We'll be going on in the daytime, meeting people, evening programs, and then we go on late into the night, and discussing various things, and then up in the morning. Uh, so he was uh, exhausted and, he, and he, he deliberately scheduled this stop so he could take a little rest before going on to the GBC meetings in India. So just he, he was there for one day and just rested, that's all. And when he came and he came to take rest, ah, oh, you could see it was such a relief. <laughs> so that was Rameshwar. He probably wouldn't remember that. Uh, so that sense of relief, that is Krishna. And the ultimate relief is from the terrible repetition of birth and death. Ah, now we're free. Uh, we hear about people being whipped and tortured and the nails being pulled out, all horrible things. This whole material life is one big torture. That's all. Sometimes we, we are actually tortured. And other times we may be feeling very comfortable, but actually this whole material existence is just like a torture. So relief is in Krishna. Of course, we take rest, but then again we have to wake up and go to work. So uh, the real rest is not, the real relief is not in this material world at all. Uh, in... The Christian tradition, they put on someone's gravestone, R.I.P., which is for some Latin term, but it means rest in peace. The idea is that after a hard lifetime, they they can just rest until the day of judgment. There's a funny theology, I won't get into it. But uh, people think that they'll get some rest at the end of life, but that's, uh, well, for someone who's lived a pious life, then they, they get relief.
from all that toil of their life. Uh, life is, if one lives actually a responsible life as one should do, then <coughs> there's uh, always it, it's there's not much rest in a responsible life. Uh, that one has to be active. Brahmana, we may think, well, he's just doing some prayers and this and that, but he's very busy. Traditional Brahmana, they're like they don't even eat until midday. They get up early in the morning and then they're busy all morning with various activities of puja and offering prayers and so many things in traditional. And Kshatriya must also be very busy. If he's if he's not busy, then the administration of the state <coughs> will not. Uh, be conducted properly. The, the, the Vaisha must be busy in producing grains, looking after cows or business or whatever he's doing. And the Shudra has to be busy. Everyone has to be busy. But in the spiritual world, there's only play. So it's a relief. Krishna offers that relief. Uh, when we when we feel uh, cold and then we we get some heat. Uh, in the, now in North India, it'll be very cold, especially at the night time, early morning. So p- people just like night watchmen, they'll they'll gather some rubbish and some leaves together and make fires and warm themselves and get some relief from that. Or in the hot season, if we can find a cool place, that's more apt for Tamil Nadu to speak of that. So all this relief. When we feel any relief from any distressing situation, the Radha Krishna Shastri, commenting on this name, he says, we can know this is a representation of Krishna. Krishna arranges that. Uh, he, all living beings rest in him at the time of devastation of the, uh, of the universe. Everything re- uh, merges into him. So in that way also... Everyone gets a rest and gets recharged. <clears throat> yeah. Word, uh, vishram is derived from the word shram. Shram means hard work. And vishram means no hard work. So for those who are very tired of this material existence and activities and the burden of their sins they can take shelter in Krishna uh, Baladev Vidya Bhushan he gives the meaning uh, that during the Rasa dance when the gopis were feeling very tired that's described in Bhagavatam Krishna just wiped their <coughs> wiped their foreheads and by the touch of his transcendental hand, all the fa- all the fatigue uh, just went away, and then they went to uh, become refreshed by uh, bathing in the Yamuna. So that's a that's a very nice remembrance of how Krishna relieves the fatigue of his devotees. So that's all I'll say for now, as I didn't prepare any more. Hare Krishna. Any question about this? No. All right then. Hare Krishna.